first of all, everyone, thank you so much for coming uh, to this latest Chain Fusion event. Um, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be anything without uh, you guys here. And um, thank you to the panelists as well because that was a very insightful and interesting discussion. Um, it, it's no secret that you know ASEAN is increasingly important uh, to the Internet Computer Project. We're very active here, and of course, uh, Singapore's an extraordinarily important uh, ICP hub. So, uh, you know, also a word of thanks to everyone involved in the ICP Hub putting, putting this great event together. So, uh, the topic today is, uh, you know, smart cities and AI and so on. So, I'll just talk a little bit about ICP technology and um, how it can play a role in, in that realm. So, the internet computer, which is a public network created with ICP technology, uh, is of course a kind of blockchain, but it has properties that are completely different to traditional blockchains, works in a different way, and perhaps most importantly, it, it can be used as a complete technology stack. So today, when we build on blockchain, uh, outside of the internet computer ecosystem, typically, you know, we build our, we build our systems and services on Web2. You know, we build them, for example, on the on the cloud, on Amazon Web Services, on Google. Um, we build them on servers, maybe if we don't want to put our data in the cloud. And, you know, we install a database server, configure it, install a web server, configure it, install a bunch of cybersecurity firewalls, anti-malware, anti-intrusion systems. If we're in the cloud... Uh, we orchestrate all of that stuff with Kubernetes and things like that. It's a big palaver. It's very complicated. And then, you know, all the data is on Web 2, effectively. Um, we trust, we, you know, we, we, we trust the cybersecurity systems to keep it safe. And then we just do a bit of, you know, we just keep a little bit of data on blockchain. So uh, ICP uh, networks are different because you can store vast amounts of data on these networks. They can perform vast amounts of data processing. They can serve uh, user experiences um, in, into web browsers. So in fact, you can build almost anything without any Web2 technology at all. So you can build um, you know, a social network. You can build an enterprise system without using traditional technology. Um, and, and this actually provides huge, huge advantages. So today, the internet computers, uh, public networks growing very rapidly. Uh, I, I think currently it's gone through a, the, the on-chain computer's gone through a growth spurt and, and it's processing about just, just shy of 1.5 million Ethereum equivalent transactions a second. 1.5 million Ethereum equivalent transactions a second. So the internet computer in one hour processes more smart contract compute than all of the hundreds of other blockchains process in a year. So if you take all of the compute running on all of the other blockchains in existence um, over a year in aggregate, that's less compute than the internet computer is is performing in just one hour so it's a different kind of of uh, network and it, it has the scalability the speed and efficiency and the functionality to allow you to use it as a new kind of tech stack and when i got into uh you know really started working full-time on blockchain theory in end of 2013 um, initially in 2014 i was just working on you know how can we make blockchains faster? How can we make them more scalable? But, but, but I heard this phrase at the end of 2014, world computer. You know, and as soon as I heard this word world computer, I thought, wow, you know, that's true. Um, blockchain hosts software with very important new properties. And we need to scale blockchain uh, into, into a world computer because these properties are important. And I think they're very important for smart cities. And 
That's irrespective of whether a small city uses a private internet computer in the form of Utopia, the new project, or, or uses the public network. So <clears throat> there are several really important properties and things that it makes possible. So I'll just run through them. Um, perhaps the most important of all is when you build a system without traditional technology, without Web2, fully on an ICP network, that system is immune to cyber attack. It's immune to cyber attack. So for example, on the public network, there are, you know, social networks, uh, you know, with large numbers of users, which have, uh, you know, tokens inside, cryptocurrency tokens inside. But because these things, these, these services run entirely on the network, they're immune to cyber attack. So they've never been hacked. They have no security team. They have no firewall. They have no anti-malware to protect against ransomware. They have no intrusion detection systems. They're cyber security free because they don't need it. They're immune to cyber attacks. And this is gonna become increasingly important because on the one hand, hackers are becoming smarter and smarter and smarter. And on the other hand, they're about to get this huge boost um, from AI. So uh, <clears throat> when you use something like GPT, you're using a locked down version. But if you can access an unlocked version of GPT, um, it will help you hack a huge proportion of online systems. And the only thing, uh, you know, that is stopping hackers accessing this technology are the companies who, uh, you know, control the base models. But, you know, sooner or later, the open source variations will be adapted and they'll fall into the hands of the hackers and there'll be a, a huge escalation in the cybersecurity crisis. So, you know, uh, for me as a, you know, uh, you know, on the one hand, an engineer, but on the other hand, a sort of th theoretical computer scientist, it's very clear that the solution to this problem is to uh, provide platforms where you don't need cybersecurity. Like the idea that we can build important systems, for example, to run a smart city, and then desperately try to protect these systems with firewalls and anti-intrusion um, software and anti-malware and security teams and security configurations is a broken one. It cannot work. There'll always be a hole. There'll always be a way around cybersecurity. It's absolutely essential that humanity moves to a new kind of IT platform, which is immune to cyber attack. Um, secondly, of course, it's, it's also uh, much more reliable when you're running software or system on an ICP network. It, it can never crash. It never crashes and stops running. Um, within fold bounds, it's running across several data centers. And so long as only a subset go down, it keeps running. So for example, um, in 2020, during uh, there was an outage of uh, Amazon Web Services data center on the East Coast of America. And, and the, new, the New York subway stopped working. Can you imagine? The subway stopped working because a data center went down. This is absolutely crazy. We can't build smart cities uh, when that kind of thing happens. Computers are the foundations of modern society. So it must be impossible for the bad guys, for hackers, to break in, encrypt it with ransomware, steal people's data. Um, and it must also be impossible that some accident that befalls the data center brings down critical infrastructure like the subway or a hospital or something like that. So these we think are very, very important properties um, that will prove to be um, game changing. And, and we think in the end, you know, blockchain inevitably um, will become the IT platform of the future. Um, and if it's not the internet computer and it's not ICP, then it'll be some other project that somehow catch it, catches us, 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 us up um, and it'll be difficult because, you know, more than a thousand years of R&D have gone into ICP so far. Okay, so um, those are very important with respect to just, you know, running systems. AI is also going to be extraordinarily important. So uh, the internet computer, um, 
has been demonstrated running AI already. So currently, uh, you know, it's been demonstrated doing uh, image classification and facial recognition, and there are upgrades coming to the internet computer and ICP generally that will enable it to run, um, you know, a, a, a large language model with a, you know, in a distillation that doesn't have too many parameters. So something like, you know, Llama 3 with like 8 billion parameters, something like that. So, you know, again, you know, for small cities where um, governments or corporations may want to run custom AI, um, another problem with custom AI, you know, one of the problems with AI is that um, people are going to see there's a choice, and the choice is either you use these big base models like GPT or Claude um, or Grok, and you upload all of your confidential sensitive data to an American corporation, right? Um, or you try and run your own AI model. Um, and then the question becomes, you know, where are you going to run this AI model? Because if you run the AI model on traditional tech, it can be hacked. And we know what happens from crypto, right? If you, if you have a hot wallet, if you put a hot wallet onto traditional tech like Amazon Web Services, and there's a private key, you know, someone's going to get inside sooner or later and they're going to use that private key to steal all the crypto. Well, AI is going to become a hot wallet for data because, uh, you know, imagine a law firm. Imagine a law firm with 100 partners. It installs an AI and that AI slurps all the communications with clients, all of the legal fi filings, all of the case law, all of the legal text. And now the lawyers can talk to the AI and say, hey, you know, may maybe they can prepare for a case, you know, for a trial. Maybe they can prepare for a trial in three days instead of three weeks. It's a big deal. So of course they want the AI. They want, but the, the problem is, like, how can they trust, they can't trust GPT or Claude or an American corporation with all of their clients' most sensitive data because if that gets hacked, their firm is going to be destroyed, right? So they've got this problem, like where are they going to, uh, you know, how are they going to solve uh, the security problem? And naturally, they're going to want to run their own model. But if you're running an AI model on traditional tech, of course, it becomes a hot wallet for data and for the same reason that you wouldn't, you'd, you'd rather keep uh, a crypto in a smart contract and put on Amazon Web Services, you'd rather keep data inside a smart contract that's running AI than, than on Amazon Web Services. So I think that's going to be very important for smart cities. Lastly, um, last thing I want to mention, and you've probably seen me, possibly if you've been following me on social media alluding to this, but um, at, at, at Affinity, you know, we believe that ICP is, and we've been, is really the perfect platform for AI to build upon. And we have a language called Motoko, which we started developing in 2018, which is kind of designed uh, for AI to build with. So um, you can imagine that in the future, that for very simple information systems, like, you know, an inventory management system, a CRM, something like that, that people might just want to talk to the AI and the AI will give them a URL. There's your web application. And that you'll put data into the web application and use it. And then, you know, say to the AI, look, I want a new feature. I want this changed. And the AI will just say done. And you'll be able to, you know, um, create and update these kind of information systems without uh, the need for a developer. And this will be kind of game changing because, you know, um, anything from, you know, corporate department, government department, down to high school biology students on a field trip collecting data, they just talk to the AI and get the information systems that they need. But th this is the future of tech, by the way. So, you know, one day people won't be buying Salesforce and uploading all their data to Salesforce. That's the model today, right? You you want a CRM, you get Salesforce and you upload all your data to Salesforce and Salesforce provides some hooks and you you you, you know you, you hire a Salesforce consultant to customize it for you. 
That's not how it's going to be in the future. In the future, you will talk to an AI and the AI will give you a custom CRM and the data will be in your possession. It won't go to Salesforce and you will talk to the AI to improve and improve your own CRM over time. It'll be unique to you. And you won't need to have a pre-canned CRM because you can just talk to the AI and make the CRM do what you want. But that model, for that model to work, you need a platform that's, uh, of course, immune to cyber attack. So you don't have to worry about how it's configured and cloud accounts and things like that. And you also need um, special lang computer languages that the AI can use that ensure your data will never get lost. So that's something else um, that, you know, we've been working on at Definity and, you know, I, it's too early to make an announcement, but I can tell you there will be announcements in the <laughs> in the coming months. Yeah, it's the big thing we're working on. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, everyone's been playing with it and getting very excited and it works very, very well. So we think that, um, you know, that's another dimension of the future that ICP enables uh, for smart cities alongside, you know, immunity from cyber attack and being unstoppable and things like that. And, and also, you know, giving people a chance to build on a transparent stack because when ICP, of course, is open source, so everybody can look at the 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 code and make sure there's no magic going on in, in the background. All right, so thank you very much.